Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Today we're talking about the respiratory system, which, uh, talk about vital, this is vital. But let's look at how it works. So the way it works, every aspect of the system is covered by a thin mucus layer. Uh, the lungs are also have another lubricant called surfactant. And when you breathe in through the nose, this warms the air, also produces nitric oxide. But when you breathe in, the diaphragm comes down and that draws the air in. And when you exhale, the diaphragm comes up and blows the air out. Now, the lungs are fantastic because it not only alkalinizes the system, balances the pH, but also eliminates weight products and does this carbon dioxide oxygen transfer. Now, inside of the lungs, the alveoli, which just look like a cluster of grapes, that's where the magic happens. That's where carbon dioxide goes out, oxygen goes in. So when we're looking at this, it's really governed by the nervous system. Now you've got an automatic nervous system. One part is called sympathetic and that keeps you alive under stress. And that's actually located in the thoracic area, the rib cage area and the top of the lumbar. The other one, and that's why it's called the thoracolumbar. The other one, the parasympathetic is also called the rest, digest and repair. Now this is located in this neck, upper neck area and the sacrum. So your body has this constant balance of sympathetic, which is fight or flight and parasympathetic rest and digest. And you need this balance of the autonomic nervous system in order to function correctly. Now it also governs blood flow. So when you're in a fight or flight state, blood goes from the digestive area out to the arms and legs so you can run away from danger. This is why digestion is suppressed. This is also why immune system is suppressed under that stress state. And that's physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Now, also, the nerve to the diaphragm is actually coming from the neck. And one of the mnemonics that I used to tell um, my docs when I was teaching them is C3, C4, C5 keeps you alive. Now, that means that the nerve to the diaphragm, the phrenic nerve, comes out of the middle of the neck. So if you have a past neck injury, okay, that compromises that nerve supply, you're going to compromise diaphragmatic function. That compromising diaphragmatic function means you're compromising that oxygen carbon dioxide transfer. You also have sensors in your neck in the carotid artery. And one of them is a chemoreceptor, one's a baroreceptor. One senses carbon dioxide levels, one senses um, the, the blood pressure. And you got to maintain your system's pH, which is a balance between acid and base, between 7.35 and 7.45. If you go a tenth of a point above or below that, you die. So when carbon dioxide levels are high, those sensors sense that and increases the heart rate or the blood flow to the lungs in order to allow that carbon dioxide transfer. So we've got to look at the central nervous system. Now, the eight most common lung problems, asthma, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchiectasis, bronchitis, pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis, and then high blood pressure, hypertension, and lung cancers. There's also other issues such as tuberculosis, cystic fibrosis, tuberous sclerosis. Sclerosis just means hardening, so it means those alveoli are not, not opening and closing the way they should. Allergies, colds, flus, coughs, lung cancer, pneumonia, emphysema. And one thing that we're seeing a lot of is acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. Now, ARDS. Now, this is sudden injury, serious injury. And this would be like COVID-19 or some type of acute infection. Now, many people who have ARDS um, are put on a machine called a ventilator. Now, this is dangerous because it forces oxygen into the lungs and forces air into the lungs, and that can actually damage lung tissue. And then you have pneumoconiosis. Now, this is caused by inhaling something that injures your lungs, such as black lung disease from coal dust, um, asbestosis. Now, 
when we're looking at this, lung disease is any problem that the lungs prevent from working properly. And there's three main types. However, many lung diseases involve a combination of these. Airway diseases, and this has to do with the tube coming down to the trachea, then you've got the bronchus, and then you've got the, the smaller tubes, the bronchi. And these, um, they carry oxygen and other gases in and out of the lungs. Now, if there's a narrowing or blockage of these airways, that includes asthma, COPD, bronchioecstasis. Now, people with airway diseases, they feel as if they're breathing through a straw. They can't really exhale. Now, other lung diseases, these affects the structure of the lung tissue. Scarring or inflammation makes it difficult for those lungs to expand or contract. This makes it hard for the lungs to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. People with these lung disorders often say as if they feel like they're wearing a tight vest. And as a result, they can't breathe deep. And this is pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis, lung tissue diseases. Now, lung circulatory diseases. Okay, these affect the blood vessels in the lungs. They're causing by clotting, scarring, inflammation in the blood vessels. They affect the ability of the lungs to take up oxygen and release carbon dioxide. These also affect heart function because you've got that heart in between the lungs and that's the, the main initiator to get the blood to the lungs and draw the blood from the lungs. Now, an example of this is going to be pulmonary hypertension. People with these conditions often feel that when they exert themselves, um, they, they run out of air. Now, when we look at the air tubes, the bronchus, okay, now in a normal airway, there's a thin film of mucus and a thin film of surfactant, which is a lubricant to allow those alveoli to open and close. Now, an asthmatic has 10 times the amount of mucus as a person who has a normal airway. And this is because dehydration or response to the environment, like an inflammatory response, is actually going to cause an extra excretion of the mucus. Now, when you have a pathogen like something, and remember, viruses, funguses, bacteria, these are not um, going after you. They're not predators. They're scavengers. So ultimately, it comes from unhealthy tissue. And this is where um, these walls inflame. So it's really the body's response to an environmental stimulus. And this, it closes those airways in the pathway of asthma or what your body perceives as it. Now, bronchioectasis um, means that there's an overproduction of this because you got to figure every opening that you got is covered with mucus. And this mucus's job is to wall off pathogens it walls it off so it can initiate an immune system response. And this is going to allow blood flow to flow there so your immune system can take care of the scavenger, okay, of this, this, um, this pathogen. Now, in bronchioecstasis, this, this pathogen is, causes more and more and more excretions of this mucus. This is why people are coughing up and they're coughing up huge amounts of mucus. But this mucus was secreted to wall off the pathogen. So it's two things. It has to do with the immune system response and how your immune system perceives the environment. Now, when you have healthy uh, alveoli, those alveoli, they open and close. They open, they close. Now, you're not opening and closing all of the alveoli every time. In a resting state, you're only using the top portion of the lungs. And you can see that that's the, the least surface area. Now, emphysema um, means that the lungs are losing their, their tissue resilience because the lungs have contractile tissue. They always want to contract. And the ribs have expansile tissue. They always want to expand out. Now, in emphysema, you're literally damaging that lung tissue. So the lungs lose that tug of war and the ribs start to pop out. This is why in emphysema, we see barrel chested and people will literally move their body down and up to increase that pressure on the organs to force air out because that diaphragm is stretched to the max because it attaches on the bottom of the rib cage area. So we call this and you'll see them bending their body forward and straightening up 
to exhale and inhale. And emphysema means that lung tissue is losing its integrity. And also there's, again, inflammation because the body's trying to heal that damaged tissue and increase mucus production. Now, bronchitis, itis means inflammation. And again, you got to have a stimulus to that immune system in order for your body to recognize a pathogen. And then it rushes blood to the area or inflamed. So when you hear bronchitis, know that that's a body doing everything it can to heal. So if that, the bronchus are inflamed, that's literally the body trying to rush blood to the area. The problem is it slows down that flow and transfer of oxygen to that area, where in a normal bronchus, you're looking at a smooth, easy pathway. So what really causes these lung issues? It's really a tissue production problem. The general consensus is that, that factors exacerbate lung problems, such as smoking, toxic exposure, but nobody's talking about the medications, how those can contribute to it. Now, anything that reduces lung functions re, um, can cause problems like COPD and asthma. And this includes over-the-counter pain medications, such as acetaminophen, but also non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like Advil, Motrin, Aleb. All blood pressure medications are going to cause, uh, can cause lung issues. Then you're looking at allergy medications, which typically reduce histamines. And that's the first line of defense that your body's immune system has. Antibiotics can cause it. I mean, most medications can cause this issue. Now, respiratory depressants. Now, these are going to be like opioids and benzodiazepines. Now, this is, this is why when people under chronic pain, they're getting morphine. Okay, they're getting opioids to deal with the pain, but that suppresses lung function. So the, the doctor's got to really balance, okay, the opioid use, okay, to make the patient comfortable with knowing that you're decreasing that oxygen carbon dioxide transfer. Now, this is going to be as some of the more, um, the more common respiratory depressants are going to be opioids, alcohol, and central nervous system depressants like anti-seizure, anti-anxiety medications. And I know if you think about it, you're suppressing lung function and you're taking a medication for anxiety. That's going to lead to anxiety. Now, limiting your toxic exposure is hugely important. Now, if you know the mask that people have been wearing for a while, they don't prevent viral infections. They don't. Okay, that's, that's a, a, a simple mask that you should use if you're sanding drywall or if you're, if you're sanding anything, okay? It's going to limit some dusk. Um, more appropriate is going to be the double filtered one. And again, this is to eliminate particles going into the lungs, not viruses, not bacteria. Now, if you're working in an extreme hazardous environment, such as like, like welding, um, uh, um, welding materials, okay, where you're getting these gases coming off of it, or if you're working in an industrial area, you need a really good filter with a positive airflow to limit your toxic environmental exposure. Now, in a 2015 study, looked at 167 participants, all diagnosed with COPD. 60% of them reporting cleaning supplies as a trigger. And I'm telling you, I got so many patients that run cleaning organizations. Now, if you're using ammonia, if you're using bleach, these are very, very toxic chemicals. You never want to mix ammonia and bleach. That creates a gas that can actually kill you. So in 50% of the participants expores, it, um, reported being exposed to perfume, scented candles, insect spray, hairspray, okay, re reported as an aggravant of this. So there's so many chemicals in our environment that you wouldn't even think of, but we have a lot of patients with chemical hypersensitivity. Now, now you've got to look at this. Is that response pathology? like abnormal or an intelligent response. Now, the normal response to inhaled substances, and we're talking like smoke, dust, pollen, the airway has become narrowed and inflamed because that's an immune system. The body is rushing blood to that area to increase the immune system defense. Mucus is produced to trap those substances, and then <coughs> you cough to get it out of your system. Now, an asthmatic response to inhaled substances is completely different. It's a hypersensitivity. So there's 10 times the amount of mucus produced in an asthmatic lung as opposed to a normal lung. 
Now, this involves constriction, inflammation, of course, excess mucus production. And so it's the same as a response as a normal person, but in an asthmatic, it's a hypersensitivity. It's an over-response. Now, this, in asthmatic patients, if you look at the immune system, it has a Th1 or Th2 response, and that's really an oversimplification. But a Th2 response is an inflammatory response. And there's a lot of medical procedures that initiate that inflammatory response. This is why we're seeing a lot of, of breathing issues or inflammatory diseases that are active in our population. Now, antibodies are produced under this acute inflammatory response to the inhaled allergen. So when a person recognizes that same allergen, bam, the immune system is overreactive. This results in inflammation, airway thickening, mucus production, bronchospasms. Okay, that means the spasm of those airways occur. In essence, asthma is a result of an immune system response of the bronchial airways, you know, according to the annual review of medicine. So what can you do to improve lung function? Number one, avoid smoke, dust, toxins, damage. Avoid toxic chemicals. Now, improve your breathing. And what, remember, you got the nerve to the diaphragm and the neck. So improving the breathing, you could have a past neck injury, and that could be altering diaphragmatic function. So that's going to be huge. Following a healthy diet. Because remember, asthmatics have 10 times the amount of mucus than, than production of a normal person. So their airways are already hypersensitive to, is hypersensitized to those normal pathogens. So a healthy diet means healthy organic. You know, eat stuff that your great-great-grandparents would recognize. And you know they only ate healthy organic. They ate seasonal. And root vegetables are amazing for their anti-mold resistant. This is where juicing and blending comes in because that's going to pre-digest it. This is why we recommend carrot juice. We recommend um, because those turns into beta carotene, which help lung function. Also organic apples with uh, multiple different colors. Those have the malic acid, which is going to clean the kidneys, which clean the blood filters. And again, the kidney is a blood filter. Increasing your water intake is hugely important and make sure it's healthy at, uh, water. And then exercise, and, and this could be as simple as diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, eucalyptus oil is amazing. I've used this many times just hiking in the woods. I was hiking with this one little kid who had uh, an allergic reaction or an asthma attack, and I crushed up some eucalyptus leaves that happened to be on the ground, okay, and had him breathe it in, that concentration, and it helped. Ginseng is amazing. N-acetylcysteine, NAC, is fantastic and then reducing the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. So when we talk about the five keys to health, when we talk about nerve supply, realize that your body is going to be elevating because you use that carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide is up, the blood pressure is going to increase. The heart rate's going to increase. They get that carbon, that blood to the lungs to do that carbon dioxide transfer. So when you're looking at elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure, it means that the body is responding to a stressor and also it's trying to um, allow that, that carbon dioxide oxygen transfer. Regular exercise is phenomenal for utilizing the bottom two thirds of the lungs along with diaphragmatic breathing. Proper nutrition, this is gonna help the blood become healthy because if that blood under stress becomes thick, it can't get through that oxygen. And so, it, you know, when we talk about plant-based diet, it's not vegan. It's the majority is plants because it's easier to break down those, those amino acids from the plant products when you're in a stress state. And rest is the key, sufficient rest. And then look at our sleep restriction videos because when you're sleeping, that's when your body regenerates. That's when you heal at night. And then prayer and meditation is equally as important has nerve supply, exercise, nutrition, sufficient rest, prayer and meditation. When you have that humility that of, of a power greater than you, you have that moment every day to pray and meditate that stimulates that parasympathetic, which is how your nervous system responds to the environment. Um, look, at the, look at lung issues has a response to the environment. 
look at, and it's not a problem of the lungs. It's a systemic problem. And when you approach it, lung issues has a systemic problem and it has a response to the environment, your body can heal. God bless you and stay healthy, my friends. Thank you.